Pew, pew, Barney me grew, Cuthbert devil and dad. Shut up, lad. Get that extinguisher. I'm the ghost of podcast past, and this is another one, another letter from the sergeant's desk. Woohoo! Oh, it's a scorcher, isn't it? 24th of June, the days are getting shorter now. <laughs> It'll be winter. How many days are, how many shopping days till Christmas? Depends which shops are open, I suppose. Oh my goodness me. Anyway, got a few things for you. Uh... I'd never know till afterwards how interesting they are, so I'll wait for you to tell me, all right? And I'll bring them to you one by one. I've got (laughs) I've got a list here. Hang on a minute. Oh, I've got two lists. So I've got to work both lists together. (coughs) Are you familiar with John Bolton? John Bolton is a a politician who's been sacked by... uh, Mr. Trump, and he's gone on to write a book, which is, we have to say, not the the most complimentary volume about Mr. Trump. But as soon as I saw him, I thought, hey, you remind me of somebody. So here's John Bolton. Now, I suppose you've got to be a certain age, but isn't he the spitting image of Richard Hearn? And you think so. Who the hell's Richard Hearn? He was Mr. Pastry. Come on, you must remember Mr. Pastry. Well, I've got a little clip for him, and he could have recorded this for the pandemic. (laughs) Just have a look at this clip, it's just wonderful. Now, as I was saying, there are three different kinds of people who are unlikely to catch influenza. The Arctic explorer, the deep sea diver, and the hermit. And you will say, why are these three kinds of people thus favored? Whereupon my answer will be, to escape flu, they get plenty of fresh air. Avoid crowded places and get regular meals and sleep. But if you do an ordinary job, like myself, you may catch flu. So, if you feel seedy with aches and pains and a headache, go to bed and call the doctor. And stay in bed until the doctor says you can get up. Keep your germs to yourself. Remember, Mr. Pastry? Good fella. One line gags. So, somebody comes into a hotel and asks for a room. And here's... Can I help you, sir? And we'd like a room for two nights, please. (laughs) Doesn't take long, does it? Bobby Moore and Pele. When did they play together? Well, of course, the first time... Well, one time they played together was in the film Escape... To victory. How long will it take? Well, you must realize it's my busy time. Everybody wants to escape in the good weather. In 1942, the Nazis thought they were sitting on top of the world, never suspecting that they could be toppled in one conflict the most unusual battle of the war. It has been decided that a German national team will play a combined team from the prisoners of war of the occupied territories. That's crazy. Okay, I'm ready to sign up. Sign up, Hank. And you ought to be exhibited in Paris like performing fleas. What about me? Get out. A stacked game. The Third Reich's finest against a ragged bunch of prisoners of war. The Germans thought they had it made. They couldn't run about for 90 minutes, they'd be chucking their guts up. Am I good? Or am I good? What's your name? You know my name. What's your name? I decided to join the team. The American? No. You use that bloody American style again here and you'll be fired. 
Dog, you're playing every shot, play American. Can you do it with your mouth shut? Hey, the mouth and the hands work together. It's a team. This match is a propaganda stunt for the Germans. It's a wonderful opportunity for us. The Allied High Command called them crazy, and maybe they were. We want you to contact the resistance for us and arrange the escape of the football team. I don't want to thank you all for your concern, but I'm really not planning on seeing Paris until after the war. Well, I'm uh, an orphan. I have no parents, no money. I'm not married. I don't even have a pet. And anything I might say in my sleep to the contrary can't be held against me. We don't want to be shot as a spy, do we? No. I don't want to be shot as anything. Victory. Starring Sylvester Stallone, Michael Caine, Max von Sydow, and introducing Pele. How'd you like to play football against the Germans? Why not? Now is the time for heroes. Victory. You've never seen anything like it. So they both played for the Allies against the uh, against the Germans, uh, and here's the team. Uh, who else can you see in that team that you recognise? There's a few of this. Yeah, yeah, okay. Now, just as a, a side thing on uh, Escape to Victory, who was the goalkeeping consultant who helped uh, Stallone with his goalkeeping technique? Hey. Eh? Very important. Uh, and uh, anyway, the other team they played for was for America. Yeah, I know it's a bit out of left field. But in 1976, America, uh, England, America, uh, Italy and Brazil all played in a little round robin tournament in the States to uh, celebrate the, uh, the bicentennial. Uh, and uh, and America didn't really have enough decent players, so they drafted in a few players. And of course, the uh, Bobby Moore and uh, and Pele were both playing in America at the time, so they both teamed up against uh, the other other clubs, the other countries, and promptly got thrashed. <laughs> so there's two different times they played played together. They play for America, and they play for the uh, the Allies. <laughs> and for the Allies team, of course, I didn't know that, but Brazil didn't enter the war against uh, against Germany until 1943. And this film is set earlier than that, so he's made out to come from Trinidad. Now, the other person they had trouble with was uh, Ozzy Ardiles, because uh, Argentina were neutral during the war, so... Apparently, he was supposed to be a Mexican, I think. There's <laughs> some a little bit of uh, poetic license going on. Escape to victory, hey? Great stuff. A little bit of confusion. I thought my uh, brother-in-law, Squire, had uh, come up with this quiz and that it was about the, uh, the airlines. Nah, got it all wrong. Trust me. It's about the aircraft, the aeroplanes. What? kind of planes they are so he sends me these pictures through he says yeah they're nice and easy except for one <laughs> yeah so here's his latest uh, quiz it's called uh, all right mate call this a bloody plane anyway so here they are six of them and i thought that i thought they were all vc10s but apparently none of them are. <laughs> Good luck. anything to do with the old uh, C-19 but 
Oh my God. I think the, uh, the lockdown has been affecting the fashion fraternity because apparently these are selection of this summer's fashion for gentlemen. <laughs> They've got to be seen to be believed. I'm worried. I'm worried for the world when I see stuff like this. Hey ho. Anyway, this year's fashions. Tech comes from uh, Spain. But uh, I love the change of expressions on these people's faces when they find out what they are eating. Don't know what's what's wrong with them, hey? Eh? If it tastes good. And everybody loves the goalkeeper. Said I pondered long, listening to Mother Nature's song. And let me tell you, son, life ain't just for fun. But if you want to have a fall, here's how you get it done. You got to swing, but you got to save your soul. Swing, but you got to hold it gets old. When troubles gather round, don't start in to frown. Just put on your dancing shoes and dance them out of town The world is full of music, don't you know? Not just 
what is on your radio. So here's my answer for, for everlasting joy. Just swing what you got to save your soul. stories can she remember and she remembers walking all the way down from Brownley Road police station to northern one day with me and I, just so the just so I could go for a haircut <laughs> I wish I could do that now so I we 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 walked and chatted and uh, I went for a haircut but but anyway you now what that did do was it reminded me of another incident that happened in Northenden on Palatine Road in Northenden. Right, so usually these jobs are late 1990s and we get a call to a, a bloke who's co a threatening to commit suicide in the street. And uh, he's poured petrol all over himself, okay? And he's standing there with the petrol can and a lighter, <laughs> okay? It doesn't sound a great set of circumstances. So we have a little, we have a little conflab round the corner, decide what we're gonna do. And I said, right, on the signal, you know what we're gonna do. So I'm not gonna spoil it for you. So we walk up to him, I'm talking to him. He said, listen, you don't wanna, oh no, 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 he's moaning away and he's gonna, and he's got the, he's got the lighter there. And, he, and so he got the three, a three, I think there were four of us, okay? Now, what he doesn't know is, well, the three of us have got the <laughs> the fire extinguishers out of the car behind our backs, okay? Now, on the side, we're going to douse him <laughs> in, in foam, and the fourth one of us is going to dive in and grab, grab the lighter. <laughs> it's all on the timing. So we're talking away. So I forget what the... I forget what the, uh, the the signal was. It was probably uh, Trumpton or something. Something with a reference to Fireman or Fireman Sam or something like that. At that moment, the three of us whip our, our extinguisher and absolutely douse him from head to foot in foam. And uh, 
the unfortunate part was the fourth of us who was going in for the lighter obviously gets in the way of this. <laughs> so, so there they are, stood in the middle of the street in Palatine Road, covered from head to foot, looked like a couple of bloody Christmas uh, snowmen. And this fellow just said, oh, 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 I didn't want to kill myself anyway. Oh, now you tell us. Yeah. Well, don't put petrol over yourself. Oh, God. It seemed like a good idea. We, it worked. I didn't really want to do it, did he? So the one officer who didn't have the fire extinguisher actually landed up with more fire extinguisher over him than all the others. I hope you did that. Back in the 60s, they would have delivered the virus in bottles. And this is the kind of lorry it would have come on. So we've got the results of my uh, letter and number puzzles. Uh, we've got three, three s solutions. Seven DS, seven Del Sierra was seven deadly sins. Four equals the SR of 16. Four is the square root of 16. And 13 in a BD, not a B-day, a BD, 13 in a baker's dozen. So I've got three more for you. If you just stand by a second. R, A, the W in 80D. Alpha, the whiskey in 80 Delta. Okay. Eight equals V of L, X in S. Eight equals V of L, X in S. Ah, that's a hard one, that one. And 6B in an O. 6B in an O. Yes, I got up in the middle of the night. This is uh, my usual. And uh, I had some more visitors. It's always nice to see them. And because it's so nice and light outside, the lighting was wonderful for this. I think it was about half past three, four o'clock in the morning. And the sun was out. <laughs> just about. And they were just... It's nice to be protected. There you go. So I went to uh, Betfred, got a bet on Wolves against West Ham for the first scorer, and I put uh, 100 quid on the on uh, the person to first to score the first goal. I think I'll be all right. <laughs> well, I think that's your lot for today. It's a lovely sunny day. I've worked out that I don't play chess very well when the sun's out. Oh, God, a couple of games today. Appalling. Appalling, I mean. But I shall improve. <laughs> Until Friday. This is your correspondent saying all the best. And make sure you look after yourselves, look after each other. And make sure you listen to who the, the pig says. That's all, folks.